preparing for the coming persecution. Persecution is coming. Prepare for it. Embrace it. Welcome it. The closer we get to the coming of the Lord Jesus, the more and more the Church of Jesus Christ will be persecuted. There is no way that you can be a genuine believer in the Lord Jesus Christ and not face persecution. It is coming. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 12 Yea, in all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. The book of Revelation reveals a time of persecution for believers like no other time before. A time of persecution where believers who refuse to take the mark of the beast will lose their ability to buy or sell. The persecution in this time will be like no other time in history. Believers in Christ will be pursued and persecuted. John chapter 15 verse 20 through 21 Remember the word that I said unto you. The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. The word of God is plain. There is no hidden truth in it. Jesus told us all that we will endure if we choose to serve and follow him. Jesus told us in his word that persecution is a sure course for every believer. If we are truly followers of Christ, we cannot escape being partakers of his sufferings. As Jesus was persecuted, we will also be persecuted. Jesus told us that the reason the world will persecute us is because they hated him. But since Jesus is no longer visible to them, they will direct their persecution to us because we profess the name of Christ. If the world hated Jesus, they cannot love us who are his followers. The truth is, if you are indeed a follower of Jesus Christ and you are indeed a disciple of his, the world will hate you. And if the world doesn't hate you, it means you are not like Jesus Christ. The early apostles were persecuted, and we must also prepare to be persecuted. Persecution is not what any genuine believer can escape. It is inevitable. Paul prayed that he may know Christ in the power of his resurrection, coupled with the fellowship of his suffering, so that he may conform also to his death. Romans chapter 8 verse 16 through 18 tells us why persecution is inevitable for believers. It says, The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with Him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. One of the amazing things I found in this scripture is that our adoption as children of God is a great relationship with suffering with Christ. What solidifies being joint heirs with Christ is our ability to endure suffering the same way he did. If we do not suffer with him, then we cannot be glorified with him. According to church traditions, the apostles were persecuted. Peter, who is said to have been crucified in Rome upside down during the reign of Emperor Nero, typically dated around 64 CE. According to tradition, Peter felt unworthy to die in the same manner as the Lord Jesus, and thus was apparently crucified upside down on an X-shaped cross. Matthew, historically understood to have been the evangelist who wrote the gospel, traditionally suffered martyrdom in Ethiopia after writing his gospel. Traditions concerning his death are somewhat scarce, though he seems to have been killed via the sword. Tradition holds that Andrew was like his brother Peter, crucified upside down on a cross, though in Patras, Greece. 
After being severely whipped and tied to the cross to prolong his agony, Andrew apparently preached to his tormentors for several days before passing away. The apostles faced persecution for their love of Jesus Christ. And even today, even today in some parts of the world, it is illegal for you to own a Bible, let alone declare the name of Christ. There are believers who have lost their jobs simply because they are Bible-believing Christians. Again, we find that the sufferings of this present time cannot be compared with the weight of glory which shall be revealed in us. This is a consolation for as many that are facing some sorts of persecution. No matter the intensity of affliction and the tribulation you face as a result of your faith in Christ, your suffering cannot be commensurate with the glory that shall be revealed. Whereas the affliction of persecutions we suffer in this world is momentary, the glory which shall be revealed in us is eternal. Trying to avoid being persecuted is like excluding yourself from the glory which we shall share with Christ. If you are a true believer in Christ, persecution is a must. It is something we cannot escape. Although persecution can come in very intensities, the truth remains that no believer will live for Christ without being persecuted. When they connive to do evil in your office or to embezzle certain funds and you speak against it, they will hate you. They can even seek your life. When others are committing adultery and fornication in your environment and you decide to live a holy and pleasing life to God, they will hate you for it. They will call you all sorts of names just because of your faith in Christ. Your promotion in the place of work may be withheld because you refuse to compromise your faith. You may have to be lonely at times because you preach the gospel. Now, unfortunately, people hide the love for Christ in order for the world to love them. But this is very dangerous because the Bible says, Matthew chapter 10, verse 32, verse 33, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Matthew chapter 10 verse 32 verse 33 Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. In other words, when the time of judgment before God comes, Jesus will vouch for everyone who embraced him as their Savior. He will stand alongside them before God the Father as a righteous witness to vouch for those who are his. Those of us who live in a first world country like America, Canada, or the United Kingdom, in a lot of other nations, it has been relatively easy for us to be Christian in these countries for centuries. In comparison to other countries, there are countries where it will cost you your life for confessing Christ. But in this country we live in, we don't face the level of persecution, yet some of us will deny Christ so that people will like us. Some of us will hide our faith so that we are liked. Now imagine what Christians who are more concerned with pleasing the world than pleasing God will do when they are faced with real persecution. I encourage you to be bold with your faith. Knowing what you know, you know hell is a real place. Yes, you do. You know that it is an internal place. Yes, you do. You know that it is a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. Yes, you do. You know that what goes there stays there. Yes, you do. You know that if someone is not born again, they will go there. Yes, you do. And yet, you keep the gospel to yourself because you are shy or timid because you are ashamed of the gospel or scared of facing persecution. Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, 
and of the Holy Ghost. This is one of the biggest warnings in the Bible. Those who aren't willing to be associated with Jesus Christ on earth won't be allowed to claim association with him in eternity. One of the signs we're living in the last days is the persecution of the church. As surely as I am standing here, the church will know more and more persecution. There is no way you can be a genuine Christian and be exempt. Jesus is the Son of God, yet he was persecuted and he admonished us to endure tribulations too. Jesus said in John chapter 16 verse 33, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. The persecution of the church is one of the greatest signs of the end time, and we have to prepare for it. Knowing that Christ will soon return, the devil will intensify the persecutions of believers. This is why we must endure to the end so that we can be saved. Matthew chapter 5 verse 10 through 12. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you.